Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Mastering Midlife, How to Thrive When the World Asks the Most of You. I am your host, Mark Silverman. Today, I'm joined by a new friend of mine, Dr. Bob Johnson. He's a doctor of medical dentistry and also a naturopath. He's trained as a dentist and was a dentist for many years, but because he's an athlete, ran a bunch of marathons, and what did you rank 35th in the country in marathons? 35th in the country in the marathon. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, He he developed a passion for integrative health and uh, has become a health and wellness coach and a corporate wellness uh, advocate. So I was talking to Dr. Bob. Uh, he actually came to one of my workshops and started talking about gut health and how that and that and that how that uh, uh, plays with with our moods and our and our overall health. And he just had me do an evaluation where we looked at where the inflammation is in my body and where nutrients might not be getting in. And I'm going to be taking digestive enzymes and a few other things. So we had a conversation about how our health and uh, not just the Kaiser Permanente go to the doctor health affects our performance, our relationships, how, how we interact with life, but uh, just everything. So I wanted Bob to be on the show to talk about this. Thanks for coming, Bob. Thank you for having me, Mark. So you know when we started when we started talking when you were in my when you were in my workshop, uh, I had mentioned you know things about breathing and I mentioned about uh, state you know our state. Uh, mm-hmm. I talk a lot about how do we get to a better state of being, a better state of mind. Mm-hmm. And then you throw out the, you know, it's about it's a lot about your gut health. <laughs> what made you What made you just jump right in there? Well, I in, in working with my clients and my patients, I see that almost everybody has some compromise in their gut health. And in my studies and uh, research and so forth has shown that the health of the gut profoundly affects the brain. It affects overall health, immunity, that kind of thing. And so without a stable, good, what we call microbiome and the health of the gut lining, uh, you just cannot have a healthy brain, uh, overall health of the body. And it's almost always is where we start in getting people healthy is the health of their gut. So I'm, you know, it it, it has profound effects and the efficacy of treatment is such that when you start on the gut, you will see vast improvements in in so many other parts of the body. So you, so you talk, uh, you know, I take a probiotic every day. So I'm a, I'm a disciple. And then, you know, our conversation before this podcast, you took me even a few steps further. And I love the, a uh, spoonful of uh, sauerkraut in the morning and a spoonful of sauerkraut mm-hmm. at night. That's really fun. But you, you, know, you, you went on a whole tear about performance, about, about cor- uh, athletic performance and corporate performance as opposed to health. Well, I'd, lo- I'd love to recreate that for the audience. Okay. Well, one of the effects of gut health, good gut health, is good brain health. And as everyone should know, the health of your brain, the function of your brain, the ability to be enthused, passionate, uh, be able to have good cognitive abilities is so contingent upon the health of the brain. And by virtue of uh, one nerve called the vagus nerve, the, what, what's going on in the brain is affecting the gut and what's going on in the gut is affecting the brain. And if you don't have good control of both of those, you're going to have not good health. And as you said, good brain health and good gut health is critical to being able to perform well, being able to have um, a a good passion about life, feeling good about life, um, have good cognitive abilities and good immunity. So both of them have to be taken care of. And that's where we start with people. So gut health affects the brain, brain health affects the the gut. And so we correct both of them individually and then together. So anecdotally, just tell me about a patient with, you know, without mentioning any who who they are, but just mention some, some stories about uh, how you, you know, someone came in with a symptom, Mm -hmm. like uh, I'm foggy or, or, uh, you know, for some reason I can't seem to lose weight. And you did some tests and you, you, you saw, you know, like something that a regular doctor never would have ever, mm-hmm. ever seen. Talk about, talk about uh, some of those case okay. studies. Uh, one of the more frequent things we see is depression. Uh, a lot of people are depressed or just kind of just going through the motions in life and not really passionate. Well, this patient the other day that we worked with that came in with that and was on various drugs for depression uh, without much, if any, 
Now, many of the depression drugs uh, are what we call serotonin uptake inhibitors. Serotonin is one of the biochemicals in the brain to keep us um, uh, feeling good, to have enthusiasm, that kind of stuff. But the drugs have some side effects. So we found out that not only do we have inflammation that we have to take care of in the brain, but we also have to get the gut health. And with him, we had to not only heal the gut, but we also had to provide a high level of, of um, probiotics and to um, help the immune system. But also we worked, believe it or not, we worked with the health of that vagus nerve that connects the two of them. So we worked individually in the gut and the brain, and um, we, we have natural um, products that help increase the brain chemicals but working with both individually and the health of the vagus nerve was, he, he was off his um, uh, depression medications within two weeks. Wow. You know, it, and, and you know, it's, always, it's always precarious because I, I talk to many different types of coaches. I talk to many different types of disciplines and we always talk about how there are ways to address depression. Mm -hmm. And then the depression um, uh, community gets very upset because you know it, they make they start to think we're, that we're saying that the clinical depression is not real. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always have to skate that thing. Like we're not we're not saying that depression isn't real. We're saying that we can we can we can do things that will reduce the severity of mm -hmm. depressions. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, the, there there are depressions that are caused specifically by things that have nothing to do with clinical depression. Sure, sure. Exercise is is you know known. Mm -hmm to handle a lot of things that we call depression. Mm -hmm. So I always, always like to talk about that because we, want, we, want to, we always want to skate that a little bit. Well, uh, there, there are lifestyle things that people can do to uh, enhance their brain's ability to get rid of the depression or to function better, as well as the health of the gut and the, the health of the brain. But there's so many things that people can do before they ever have to take drugs. And, and most people realize that drugs are treating a symptom rather than treating the underlying cause. And that's what we uh, like to promote is to treat the underlying cause of health problems, whether it's diabetes or depression or whatever, is to treat the underlying cause and not just treat the symptom. Because it'll keep coming back and you'll be on drugs for, you know, the lifetime. Hmm. Let's, so let's slow down. Why are, you, why are you passionate about this? Why do you care? Well... I you was, were a dentist, yeah, you probably right, were making right. good money, you're probably yeah. doing fine, uh -huh. you know, you could experiment on yourself, but you switched, you mm -hmm. know, you changed your focus. Well, or as I became a dentist, I was also evolving my athletic career. And to be at a high level athletically, I needed to be a very healthy person. And to enhance performance, I had to really go above and beyond what the average person is, health-wise, energy-wise, that kind of thing. That combined with, I always had this interest in helping people perform better. Um, and I also realized as I evolved in my dental career that there was so much need for people to be able to find the underlying cause of issues. And our healthcare system, um, and I'm not trying to rail on that, but our healthcare system is very expensive. And yet we only have about the 37th healthiest um, country in the world. And so there's a great thing we aren't being very effective. And I saw the need there for people to be able to be in much more control of their health. And so that's why, uh, based on my personal issues and my athletic performance and so forth, but also my real need and what I saw was a need out there to help people get healthy where they were being failed by our medical system. So you also take this into companies, into corporations. Uh, and you're very passionate about the fact that, pe that the people's health in the organization really go to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is profitable mm -hmm. to make sure your people are healthy and their well-being is taken care of. Talk sure. about that. Well, when you treat individuals, you see that they individually become much more productive and they have better quality of life and so forth. Well, you extrapolate or you take that into large organizations, whether they be companies or clubs or um, uh, other organizations, 
and you realize that when each individual is functioning at a much higher level, the pr productivity, the bottom line of that company or that organization is going to function much better or they function at the level of their collective individuals. And so when you can get everybody being more uh, productive individually, when they aren't uh, absent, when they come in and we have a lot of things that we can help them focus better, when they're more enthusiastic um, individually, then collectively as a company, as an organization, that organization can improve their bottom line by, and a Harvard study showed this, by anywhere from 17 to 23%. And so I saw the need there, and it was just a, a, a very natural progression from individual health to company health. And so that's why I made that jump and opened my company to be able to start to serve com other companies and let them be productive. So, so make that real for me. Tell, tell me some low-hanging fruit that you walk into a company. Where do you, where do you start? Where do you, know, where do you generally notice uh, where you can, because you want to make big gains in order to keep that gig. Sure. You want to make big gains. So you're going to go look for mm -hmm. low-hanging fruit where you can say, see, I made an mm -hmm. improvement here. What do you usually say? Well, when we go into a company, the first thing we want to find out is what does that company want to achieve? Maybe they say, yeah, we would like to improve our bottom line 15, 20 percent or, or more. And we structure a program based on what their goals are. And so the, we can offer them a whole list of things. We can get their individuals out of pain. We can um, help their individuals understand better what their nutritional uh, program should be. Uh, that can be done with um, presentations, talks. Um, it can be done with athletic programs. It can be done teaching them how to reduce anxiety. All those things we can do, and not everybody's going to be compliant. Not everybody's going to want to do everything that we suggest. But if we have 50%, if we have 60 70% of the organization or company that they are incorporating two or three or four or five things that they wouldn't normally do, or they get the information to say, you know what? I'm weed allergic. Every time I have weed, I you know, have a problem. We can get them off wheat or we can get them to be taking certain supplements that they may be deficient or helping them sleep better. This is where we can make a, a, a big impression individually and then as a company, the company benefits greatly. So we, we, we structure our programs based on what the company wants to achieve. But basically what I'm trying to do is help individuals, whoever wants to take it and run with it. And by in turn, the company will be much more productive. Yeah. For me, the low hanging fruit is those candy balls that everybody has all around. <laughs> I, work, I work with a CEO who just lost, you know, 20 pounds. He's doing great. His exercise mm -hmm. program, he's really feeling good about himself. And then he walks into his office and there's bowls of his favorite candy. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, 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 we talk about the dangers of sugar and what it does mm -hmm. to us. It just changes the way our moods and our inflammation and how we are. So that's the first, that's a low hanging fruit. Right, right. But you, you know, you also work with, you work with teams of people. So we get, so we start working on, on the individuals uh, and we start working on, you know, what are their, what are their mm -hmm. food allergies? What are, what are the, what's the low hanging fruit to help them feel better? And for me, when that, that makes a light bulb for me, because once they start to feel better, once their brains are a little clearer, now their interpersonal skills can really be addressed mm -hmm. and how they're, how they're interacting with people and, and team building. And you work with other people mm -hmm. in, in companies to help, you know, to address all of that, right? Right. Exactly. And if you think about it, probably the most important thing that anyone needs, whether they realize it or not, is good health. And once you get them- So good health, so I really, you know, this, this is the thing in, in talking to you for the last couple of days, it, it, good health doesn't mean I go to the doctor and I don't have diabetes. I go to the doctor and I'm not, I don't have an eminent heart, heart, mm -hmm. heart attack. Good health means I feel good. My brain is clear. I'm sleeping. Exactly. Right? I'm not walking around with chronic pain all exactly. the time because not because of an injury, right? Mm -hmm. Like good health, we, we've really put the bar really low in what mm -hmm. we consider good health. Right. And, and here's a very important concept to understand is that disease and illness takes a long time to, from its beginning, from its inception to actually its manifestation at which time they're given a drug. 
So for example, cancer might be going eight, nine, 10 years before it actually shows up in this diagnosis cancer. Diabetes, the same thing. It might take five, six, seven years as a uh, beginning diabetic or pre-diabetic all the way to full-blown diabetes when you've got to start taking medications. And your doctor's going to say, oh, your numbers are a little high. Oh, your numbers are a little high. Oh, your numbers are a little high. And then one day you're going to walk in and go, oh, you've got diabetes. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and one of the fallacies in traditional medicine is that the normal blood vessel uh, values, and I put that in quotes, normal, includes 95% of the population. 95% of the population is not healthy not and country. should not be in that. And only at the late stages of disease does something show up on a blood test. And so we narrow those blood values. We have diagnostic tools and assessments to be able to pick things up instead of at year eight, nine, 10, we pick things up starting at week one, month one, year one, year two, when it's so much easier to take care of it's so much quicker and it's much less expensive to be able to resolve a person's beginning illness at week one, month one, year one, than it is before they have to go get chemotherapy or they have to be on drugs for the rest of their life. So that's the exciting part is to be able to assess and diagnose very, very early in someone's life. And they can make very slight changes like something like, you know, you cannot have wheat, otherwise you're going to react or... And I'm, I'm that way. Yes. I, like, and, and in the test that you did, well, we're going to talk about the testing that you do, the test that you just did with me. You said, you know, Mark, you really need to avoid wheat. And uh, I said, oh, I had pizza last night because it was my birthday. Mm -hmm. And yes, my hands hurt. Mm -hmm. I, I, the inflammation is immediate with me, mm -hmm. immediate with me with wheat. So it's, it's so sensitive that right. you can figure this and out. And if someone's, and this is just an example, if someone's allergic or sensitive to wheat and they have wheat, they're going to have a compromised immune system. And a compromised immune system means you're much more susceptible to illnesses, infections, the flu, cancer, all those things if you don't have a strong immune system. And little things throughout the day that you're compromising the immune system lays you bare for illnesses and diseases. So if we find that someone like you is very sensitive to wheat, allergic to wheat, and you avoid that, your immune system is going to be stronger and you're going to resist the flu or cancer or those kind of things. And what, so what do you say to people who say, this is too hard to keep track of, you know, it's just not my lifestyle. And you know, right. what do you say to people like that? Well, compliance is a big part of this. And I can identify things that people need to put in their life or avoid or uh, maybe a supplement to take. And I inform people, whether they follow it through or are compliant, that's entirely another story. And they have to, if they want to be healthy, if they want more energy, they have to uh, incorporate some new things in their life. And some people or most people don't take action or significant action until they really get very sick or they have you know headaches all the time or they can't sleep or they're so anxious and then they come to me and we start to resolve those things one by one so many times compliance only happens when people have some real urgencies um, but there are other people which is very nice is to work with people who before they have the urgency they can uh, start to make changes in their life. Yeah, it's funny. As a, as a coach, uh, and I was just talking to one of my other podcast guests, is it usually takes some sort of stress or some sort of crisis for people to actually realize that I can help in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally, you know, want to, I, I personally am interested mm -hmm. in coaching people in creating really cool things. Right, right. But it usually co co comes first with crisis, with chaos, with mm -hmm. some kind of drama in their life. And I have to help clear that out so we mm -hmm. can get to the creation. And then it's really fun. I haven't yet figured out how to get people who are doing, you know, firing on all cylinders to now come and mm -hmm. say, hey, we can actually fire on more cylinders that you don't even know about, right, right. which is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and here's the other thing. Thing. I may find on somebody four or five things that they need to change. But my feeling is if they do one or two, they're, they, they may not be totally able to resolve things. But if they change one or two things, they're going to be infinitely better than if they do nothing, at it, nothing else at all. So I, I'm very realistic with people. I, under, I try to understand people. 
and I make my recommendations according to what I understand. Is this a person who's going to be totally compliant? Is this a person who's going to be, eh, okay, I'll change this one thing, but I'm not going to get rid of my, you know, uh, drink at night, or I'm not going to get rid of my uh, yen for chocolate or whatever. So, um, you know, you have to understand a patient as, as you do as a coach to, um, uh, to figure out what your recommendations are, whether you comply or whether you change your lifestyle and don't have wheat or you take a supplement or whatever, that's entirely up to you. But you, because you had some pain in your hands, you say, I don't really want that. I think I'll avoid wheat from now on. So you have to understand your patient. You're, you're, I, I, I avoid it until I forget yes. and then I eat it and then I go oh that's why I don't do that mm -hmm. I, I have a very interesting little um, uh, way that I strategy that I work with people I say okay I know this is going to be hard for you to avoid whatever it comes up and I say why don't you avoid that for a week see how you feel see the improvement that you have and then for one day have a high amount of that thing that you were avoiding and see how lousy you feel. And it, does, it doesn't fail to identify with people how much they need to make that change because it, it, it's for that day that they're taking it and for probably another day or two, they're feeling terrible. So that's a nice little strategy too. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a walking experiment <laughs> for that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your contact information mm -hmm. in the show notes so that people can actually get to you. What is, the, what is your website just for people who are listening? Um, I have two websites. One is uh, www.vital100wellness.com. And the one for corporate wellness is um, health awareness ventures, plural ventures, healthawarenessventures.com. All right, you don't have to remember that because, like I said, I'm going to put it in the okay. show notes because I really want people to get in touch with you. I really, and I actually would like you to come back if you would to talk about some more specific things if you're willing to do that. I'm very happy to do that. And the fact that everybody has health issues and can benefit from this uh, makes it applicable or understandable and desirable for really anybody. I'm going to get on my soapbox. What we consider health is not health. Just because you don't have diabetes or heart disease today doesn't mean that you shouldn't be addressing your health. You can feel and be better, be so much clearer and have so much less pain in your body with just a few adjustments. And I'm going to make some of the adjustments in, that uh, Dr. Bob gave me suggestions for, and I'm going to report on that. But really, thank you for mm -hmm. being on the My show. My pleasure. My pleasure. To everybody else, I had pizza and uh, ice cream last night, so I am a little foggy in this <laughs> podcast. Uh, I've been dealing with it all day. I had a great time for my birthday, but uh, I am paying the price. I thank you for giving me your most precious commodity, which is your time and attention. I love you and have a great rest of the day.